Greetings, my name's Craig Gooden and I have a few scriptures and some thoughts to share with you that I'm hoping will encourage you. In James chapter 1 verse 14 to 15, James says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin when it's finished brings forth death. So what we find in is that temptation, this drawing away by our lusts and being enticed, leads unto sin, and then this sin causes death. Entice means to be bribed or to be offered something of pleasure. It Sin seems to be like this parasite that uses temptation to get you to the end result of death itself. Scientists, when they've looked at how parasites, hosts, and viruses work, they've realized that the parasite, once infecting the host, changes the nature of how it acts. Normally, a rat would run away from the smell of a cat's urine, but when it gets infected by a single cell relative of malaria called Tuxoplasma um, gundi, they found that the rat actually, instead of running away when it smells the cat's urine, it becomes more curious of the cat when it smells the cat's urine, allowing the cat to kill it. Now they found that the Tuxoplasma gundi can only reproduce and grow in the guts of a cat. So ultimately, it fulfills its aim, infects a rat, the rat gets killed, the Tuxoplasma is carried from the rat to the cat, and then the Tuxoplasma grows, this T. gundi grows in the guts of the cat. It's a bit like what we've just read regarding temptation, lust, sin, and death. We become a host fulfilling something that, we, that God desires us not to. Temptation, I hear many people saying, well, when I'm tempted, I don't know what to do. I, I feel like I just can't overcome. I, I can't run away from it. I want to share with you that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, God says that he will actually make a way of escape for you. But the first part of call is when you're tempted, pray. Ask God for help and strength and have faith in him that he will make a way of escape for you. Then we have lust. Now, 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, it says that all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These things are of the world and not of the Father. They will pass away. If we're with God, we won't pass away. We'll hold on to him as long as we're following, doing the will of God. So it seems as if passion, these lusts, these desires, these passions are in control of principle. A few years ago, I went to a shop and I saw this elderly lady walk in there in her 60s, 70s, maybe 80s. And she could just about speak, but she's calling out for that box of cigarettes that tell her, do not smoke me because you will die. But she still desired it. Why? Passion was in control of principle. Some of you may have some passions that you need to allow principle to be in control of. You may be on the internet all day long. You, you may be looking at things that you shouldn't be. You may be going places that you shouldn't be going to. Um, you may be around friends that God says, look, I need you to leave them. So you get tempted when you're around them. You give in to things when you're around them. But God says, look, I'm opening a door for you to leave. But will you heed that call? You see, God's desire is that this, these passions will be under the control of principle. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he said, look, that he wants to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. So God says, I'll, transform, I'll give you a new mind and this will transform you. Now, this new mind, when it's given, allows your passions to be under the control of principle. So we're once where God desires us to be, principle controlling passions. There's some things that you may need to repent of. And God says, as long as you stay connected to him, he will give you the strength to repent, to overcome. But if you take your eyes from him, don't be surprised if passions begin to control your principles again. We need to stay connected with God so we can overcome these ways of living. Remember, principle needs to be in control of your lusts, your passions. And if those things directly in the word of God, God says you shouldn't be doing them. By his grace and his power, he will help you to overcome. The beauty is that even with sin itself, and sin is the transgression of the law, as we read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, we also see that the wages, our works of sin, are death. Romans 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But in 1 John chapter 2, John says that if any man has sinned, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who's there, that if you have sinned, 
I can tell you today that you can have the assurance that you can be forgiven if you come to him and repent with your whole heart. True repentance is not just repenting when you've, you've committed a sin and it feels bad, so you need to go and ask God for forgiveness. No, true repentance is a hatred for sin, even though you may feel like doing it. And that's what we need to ask God for, strength to have hatred against sin, even when I feel like doing it. So these three things, temptation, there's a door that's opened. Lust, desires, passions, to be controlled by principle. Sin, we have an advocate with the Father that if you have sinned, you can be forgiven. Death, you don't need to worry. God says that the grave is not the last place. He is coming back and he will resurrect the dead. Just be in the righteous resurrection. Because Matthew 24 verse 13 says, Only he who endures unto the end will be saved. I'm hoping that this encourages you. And let's stay focused on God. God bless you all.